On the surface, April's astrology seems less intense than March, but we're in unfamiliar territory. We really need to watch our step. With Saturn in Pisces, the woo-woo gets real. This is a month of healing and high strangeness. Today's video offers nine keys to April 2023. My name's Laura Bruno, and I'm an intuitive astrologer. Let's get started. Number one, Mercury in Taurus. Mercury enters Taurus on April 3rd and stations retrograde on April 21st. That means that the messenger is going to spend a good long time in slow and steady Taurus until June 11th, actually. Now, this is significant because on June 11th, Pluto, who's been in Aquarius, is going to move back into Capricorn. And when Mercury enters Taurus, we get an exact square with that Pluto in Aquarius. So we've got bookends on both sides of Mercury and Taurus telling us that this transit is going to do some deep dive processing. Now those hidden things that come up, they could be ugly, they could be dirty secrets, all sorts of things that maybe we don't want to know about our society or about ourselves, but it's up. And so this is one of the keys to dealing with April is uh, get out your journal, get out your dream journal. The deep stuff is going to be coming up and whether we like it or not, we're going to have the time to review it. There's been a lot of revelations over the last few months, many months, and we just, it's been so fast and furious that we haven't even really had time to unpack that. That's going to change in April and May. And uh, likely this is going to give us a much newer understanding of our bodies, our values, our food supplies, and our money. So uh, big key with Mercury and Taurus, use the time wisely. It's going to seem slower. We've had really fast things for the last, really since Mars was in Gemini all that time, and then Mercury was in Aries. We got used to this chop, 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 chop information. That's going to change for a little while, and that's a good thing if you use it well. Number two, Sun conjunct Chiron in Aries on April 5th. When I started preparing to make this video, I realized that I have a sun portal and a Chiron portal and that I could put the two of them together and voila, we've got a demonstration of sun conjunct Chiron. So here they are next to each other. And the energy that I've embedded into these is about expanding to your brightest, shiniest, shine your light forth self into the universe. You are a unique creation and you are here to shine. There's that sun energy. And then the Chiron energy is the wound. So uh, it's also the wound from which we can become the wounded healer. Today's energy asks us to look at whatever is standing in the way of our own healing. Anyone that's got Chiron in Aries in their natal chart is going to feel this more. There's going to be issues about identity, about your ability to move forward with your desires and your plans. Any codependency is going to be up more. But this is also just going to be up because the collective energies are there right now. Something to keep in mind is that this point where the sun conjuncts Chiron is in the same degree as the beginning of the Watergate scandal. So um, we may get information that's connected to the original Watergate, or we may see situations that arise in modern times that somehow remind us they have a flavor of Watergate. In any case, uh, that was a very difficult time in US history, and we're at the exact Chiron return for that. We're also getting very, very close to the full U.S. natal Chiron return. That's more at 20 degrees, whereas Chiron in Aries is right around 16 degrees for this April 5th conjunction. But it's still within orb. We can still feel it. It's one of the reasons that the U.S. is kind of a mess right now. And so everybody's going to feel that energy. In terms of how to personally respond to this, it's a great time to... Uh, really decide that you're you're done with that whole victim abuser paradigm. Just because you've been wounded in the past doesn't mean that you need to continue to operate from that place. Most abusers have been abused themselves. We have a responsibility to heal ourselves and in doing so, in taking those resources and taking that time and that energy to take care of ourselves, we actually do improve the world. We bring energy into the world that's free of that victim abuser paradigm and we're able to just really embrace all of these new energies that have started in March and that we're continuing to feel now. 
Number three, full moon in Libra, April 5th or 6th, depending on your time zone. This occurs at 1234 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so adjust accordingly depending on where you are. This full moon in Libra opposes a Jupiter Chiron conjunction in Aries. I'm actually including the full portal door from where I got the Chiron portal in the last segment. So I've got the King of Cups on top and then Chiron on the bottom. And basically the King of Cups is kind of a Jupiter energy. So this is very much embodying the energy of this particular transit. The full moon is gonna bring up uh, tension between relationships and our individual needs, especially our individual needs for money, for our truth, our philosophy, and for our own healing. The Sabian symbol for this full moon is Libra 17, a retired sea captain watches ships entering and leaving the harbor. This is Three of Wands energy. So you see how he's standing at the harbor, just looking out and seeing which ships are coming in, which ships are leaving. This is a very liminal time. This is a time of opportunity. This is a time of, if not this, then something better. Also at this full moon, Mercury conjuncts the North Node in Taurus. So pay attention to any kind of messages that come through because Mercury is the messenger and the North Node is that collective destiny point. So uh, energy may come through, it may seem off the wall, it might seem like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure I wanna trust that, but if it comes through today, you probably should. So Venus rules both Taurus and Libra, so we've got a double whammy of Venus energy that's gonna help us receive beautiful messages, earth healing messages, messages related to arts, uh, to our values, to our self-esteem, very important information coming through this day, so pay attention. I'll do a longer full moon post closer to the time, but for now, just circle April 5th and 6th because these are really, really potent days for healing. Number four, on April 11th, the sun conjuncts Jupiter in Aries and Gemini enters... <laughs> Number four, on April 11th, the sun conjuncts Jupiter in Aries and Venus moves into Gemini. Now when Venus moves into Gemini, she actually trines Pluto in Aquarius and she squares Saturn in Pisces. So this, this is a lot of energy today. Um, Jupiter, Venus, and Pluto are all connected in some way with money or wealth. So this could be a money day. If you've lost money recently, the energies today actually have kind of a, a sense of, of being able to renew, to rebirth, to rejuvenate. So this could be a good day. You wanna pay attention to big ideas that come through, things that could expand your financial horizons, that could expand your prosperity. With that um, Venus-Saturn square, that can be a little bit of a difficult energy day for relationships, but it brings the karma too. So we've had kind of a lot of financial shenanigans happening lately. And with um, that Venus square Saturn, so the thing to remember is Saturn is the Lord of Karma. Venus and Jupiter also are um, money-oriented. Pluto, money-oriented, wealth-oriented. But um, whereas Jupiter is generally like big, jovial, and expansive, uh, optimistic, Venus and Pluto can, can be a little vindictive, right? Like Venus and Pluto can try to get revenge. And so the energy with, with today, it has lucky energy for finances, but it also maybe will bring some karma to anybody that's been abusive with finances or that has been um, abusive to other people in a way that has affected their finances. So we may see that. I'm gonna share another portal here, um, you can see it, and this is my Stargate portal. The reason I'm sharing it is for a few reasons, actually. So um, Pluto is in Aquarius, and the star card in Tarot is associated with Aquarius because Aquarius is the water bearer, and you see how she has the, the two uh, pails of water that she's pouring out. 
And so that energy is embedded into the card, but this is just a very beautiful energy and it's an optimistic, hopeful energy. It's tapping into our deepest, uh, most cherished dreams and being able to, to really find our North Star, our, our true North and, and bring that into our own reality. So it's a fabulous time with, uh, with Venus in Aquarius, with Venus in Gemini, it's a fabulous time for positive affirmations. It's a good time to do negotiations. It's a great time for social networking and for, in general, communicating about relationships. Just beware with that Saturn energy in there. It's going to bring up issues of uh, commitment. So sometimes tensions can arise in a relationship if it needs to move forward and it's not or if we're trying to force it to move forward and it really doesn't belong in our future. It's, it's more about our past. So that kind of information may come up much more so on, um, on April 11th. And this will just allow us to do some extra healing around finances, self-worth, and big ideas. All right. Number five. Vesta enters Taurus on April 15th. I don't often include Vesta in my monthly forecast, but I am this time because of the very potent square with Pluto in Aquarius. In ancient Rome, the Vestal Virgins had a very important job. They were in charge of tending the sacred flame that metaphorically kept the city alive. Because they had such an important job, they were given extra extra because they had such an important job, they were given some extra privileges that most women didn't have at that time. They could own property. They were able to do things without having to get permission from a husband or a father or a brother. So they were much more independent, but this came at a cost. They had to take a vow of chastity and if they ever got caught breaking it, they were buried alive. It was illegal to spill the blood of a Vestal Virgin and so the punishment being death meant that they would actually have the grisly death of, of being buried alive. Um, that really ties into this Plutonian square, right? So Pluto is the lord of the underworld. If the Vestal Virgins are being buried alive, uh, kind of a heads up today that any repressed sexuality, any boundary violations, anything that uh, triggers shame that's connected to sexual expression or inhibition, um, that's up. That's going to be up in mid-April. Now, the, the good news about that is that the energy is supportive to move through that. Yes, it's a square and there's friction, but it's like Pluto's the rapist and then we've got this Vestal Virgin. But even though that's the history of the Vestal Virgin, there's also this connection with Tantra and sacred sexuality, sacred prostitution. And then you've got this, you know, hidden Pluto occult realm. So it's this very magical time period. If, if you are somebody that does Tantra, this is like particularly potent portal. It's also um, a time where you could have deep healing if you've had to deal with any kind of uh, childhood sexual abuse or rape or violation, even something like narcissistic abuse that kind of takes away your sovereignty, that's going to be up in, in mid-April. And the nice thing about Vesta being in Taurus is that she reminds us that our body is our temple. So we are sacred within ourselves. Anything or anyone that has stood in the way of that, that has uh, kept us from feeling like we can um, really reclaim that energy and live from a passionate place. Um, Pluto obliterates anything that's standing in the way of your growth. And so this healing is available at this time. All right. Number six, eclipse season begins on April 19th or 20th, depending on your time zone. This actually happens at 12, 13 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, so give or take wherever you are. But this is a super intense time period. It's in the very last degree of Aries because it's our second new moon of the year. It's like Aries on steroids, and then it's also squaring 
Pluto in early Aquarius. So it's an out of sign square, but that's nonetheless very, very potent. Eclipses are potent anyway, but anytime you get a square from Pluto, it's like, you know, intensity is skyrocketing. The other thing to keep in mind is that the North Node will be changing signs on July 22nd. And that is, uh, again, North Nodes always move in retrograde. And so it will move from Taurus to Aries, meaning that this point where we're having the eclipse on April 19th or 20th is that same degree that on July 22nd, the North Node is going to cross. So anything that comes up during the time of this eclipse is likely to be something that we're also going to be working with for about 18 months after uh, the North Node moves into late Aries. So um, important questions to ask yourself are things about relationships. Are certain relationships or codependencies standing in your way? The Sabian symbol for this new moon is actually kind of cute. Um, it's a duck pond and it's brood. Keynote, the realization of natural boundaries. So uh, with the, the duck pond and its brood, it's like, oh, make way for ducklings. But um, so that, that new, fresh, cute energy, but at the same time, something is going away. And if you've uh, encountered anybody in nature that is protecting their, their young, you know that that mama bear energy, even like goose energy or duck energy to protect the babies, um, that brings out the intensity because that new must be cherished. And so some of this is what's going to be coming up at the time of this eclipse. That Aries energy is new energy, even though we're in the last degree of Aries, it's it's the essence of Aries, kind of the, the mastery of Aries. And so it's that need to protect and have good boundaries so that the new can actually exist so that it can thrive. I'm going to do a much longer post for this closer to the time of the new moon in Aries solar eclipse. But for now, the main thing to keep in mind is that that square from Pluto is going to up the intensity instead of just lasting six months. The energy from this eclipse is really likely to last more like 20 to 21 months. So use the time wisely. If you don't like what comes up, then uh, make a strategy, but also realize that um, that's something that, that you'll be learning and that as a society we'll be learning in the months and year and a half to come. Number seven, later on April 19th or 20th, again, depending on your time zone, the sun moves into Taurus. Now I'm wearing a light green dress today and uh, this, this leaf necklace, I'll just stand up so that shows up, whoops. Uh, that's in honor of, of these earthy Taurus energies. So Taurus is an earth sign. Um, again, with that square to Pluto, it intensifies the move into Taurus, but also since Pluto rules the un underworld, uh, we get this kind of fairy energy. So the, the beautiful um, Venus energy of Taurus and then that Plutonian underworld that's currently in weirdo wacko Aquarius, uh, that com can combine in a way that kind of brings out the fairy energy. And in particular with um, Saturn in Pisces, which is kind of the, again, this sort of like dream realm and then Saturn that like structure. So more of that liminal blending of realities. And then we've got Mars in Pisces, very watery, earthy energies and the underworld that just brings kind of a magical, mystical energy to, um, all of Taurus season. And sometimes Taurus feels slow. I think we're gonna enjoy that this year just because of all of the fresh energies. We need time to integrate that. And the nice thing about Taurus is even though it's slow to get going, once it does get going, the principle of inertia keeps it going. So an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by an equal or opposite outside force. But uh, once that object is moving, it takes an equivalent force to stop it. And so we're using this month to tap into how do we bring that kind of 5D realm, that, that um, otherworldly, other, uh, other realm 
into the tangible reality. And this is a wonderful time to engage your most beautiful vision for the world, your most beautiful vision for the earth. We've got that Venus energy and that fairy energy, and it's just, it's, it's got a wonderful potential for something magical to occur. Number eight. On April 24th, the Sun conjuncts the North Node in Taurus. This is a beautiful opening, light shining on the new healed Earth. Also, strong focus on food security, financial security, anything beautiful. Venus rules Taurus, and so we've got this energy that wants to make things real, make things solid, and it's connected to our collective destiny with that North Node point. So a beautiful opening. Number nine, last one. So on April 29th, Mars in Cancer sextiles Uranus in Taurus. This is a harmonious kind of subtle transit which is a good thing when we're dealing with Mars Uranus transits because sometimes they can get a little chaotic. But in this case with the sextile energy, it's harmonious and it, it's supportive of breakthroughs. So how this could show up is, for example, you, you might get a sudden download of an idea that's um, something that then all of a sudden you're so excited about that you take action on it right away. So you make a big change if you go from idea to manifestation very quickly. The other way that it could work out is you've got really strong emotions about something, even if they're negative emotions. It could be like frustration uh, that shows up. And if you just shift that ever so slightly to determination, then that solution comes out of nowhere. So it's like... Psh, psh, you know, really um, energy coming from all sorts of different ways. So the, the mental realm, the physical realm, the emotional realm, the spiritual realm are all interacting in this harmonious kind of unpredictable way, but you can direct that energy to some extent. You can influence it. So uh, this also occurs uh, on April 29th is right before April 30th, which is traditionally Beltane Eve. That is the thinnest veil day besides Halloween, Samhain. Uh, traditionally, it's when the fairies change residences, the trooping fairies, but it's also just a very liminal kind of space. It's sort of like twilight all day in terms of being able to tap into things that you wouldn't maybe normally be able to see or sense. Um, so just something to keep in mind. These are magical, magical energies in April. I wish you a wonderful month and we'll catch you next time. Bye.